This official Newcastle United video is brought to you in association with Newcastle Breweries, proud to be the club's major sponsor. You'd have to go back 69 years for more success, but not more emotion. Newcastle fans had surely never seen such glorious entertainment. The order to attack came from the top, and out on the pitch the response was dazzling. Great style from the best in the world. Great goals from the best in Britain. Has there ever been a season like this with the drama, the flair and the football that took Newcastle United so close? Kevin Keegan only aims for the top. In four sensational seasons, Newcastle's rise has been meteoric. But Keegan would never be satisfied until he'd won the trophies he passionately believes United fans deserve. In the summer of 95, the club completed its super stadium. The manager was building a team to match. He bought Shaka Hislop, an outstanding talent in goal, for one and a half million. England defender Warren Barton was persuaded to move north. The cost, four million. Two and a half million really was a bargain for one of Europe's finest, stylish French international David Ginola. And finally the big one, a club record six million for goal scorer Les Ferdinand, a number nine in the real Newcastle tradition. 14 million pounds spent and the new season couldn't come quickly enough for every Newcastle fan. All they needed now was the opposition. What a day to kick off a season. Sky-high temperatures for the opening match against the Sky Blues. And St James's Park had never looked better. 36,000 fans filled every seat in every corner of the stadium. Keegan had all four expensive new signings in the side. And right from the kickoff, the heat was on. Gillespie. Newcastle's campaign has really come alight. Robert Lee, who started last season in such emphatic fashion, straight into his stride. Gillespie's cross, they were looking for Ferdinand, but it was Lee who got there. Fox picks up that loose one, and he's round Brian Borrows. Fox has Ferdinand in the middle, and Beardsley still with Fox. Fox for Beardsley, trying to take it in his stride. Beardsley trying to go through. Penalty, he's got it. Beardsley with the penalty, as reliable as ever, Peter Beardsley cracks that one home, and it's 2-0 Newcastle. And now Newcastle have the chance to cruise their way through, and Ferdinand's off on a major run here, Ferdinand, he's round the keeper, Ferdinand, what a tremendous goal for Les Ferdinand, who opens his account, and St James's Park erupts, and Les says it in style. That's what those supporters think of their new £6 million pound man. Burnden Park was the venue for United's first away trip. Bolton had triumphed in the First Division playoffs, but Newcastle continued their good start and spoiled Wanderers' Premiership home debut. Now as you know. But it was a classy touch from Les Ferdinand. Lee, Ginola, was it a cross, was it a shot, it wasn't far away, whatever it was. There's a goal! Gundy Bergson powers the ball in and stuns Newcastle United. A quarter of an hour remaining. Bolton won, Newcastle won, Gillespie with him, two players, there's Lee, and there is a goal for Robert Lee. He 
Clark. Ferdinand given the freedom of the centre circle. Away he goes. No stopping him. He keeps going. He's got a chance for a second. And that is class from Les Ferdinand. Next stop, Hillsborough, live on satellite television. Sheffield Wednesday, now managed by David Pleat, had lost narrowly at Liverpool, but beaten champions Blackburn. United took charge in the second half. Face to face, Kevin Keegan and Brian Robson, former inspirational England captains who are now two of the most exciting managers in the Premiership. The Tyne Tees derby was won in a moment of magic from Newcastle's Frenchman, and Middlesbrough were left fuming at a late claim for a penalty. Janola still going, he won't release it till the opening's there. Hignett trying to close him down. And out wide and Pollock will chase this one Peacock the defender and Pollock goes down and looks to the referee and there's no whistle and Pollock is absolutely furious with that verdict going Peacock's way United led the table at the end of August with four straight wins yet another racing start for Keegan's team When Newcastle made the long trip to Southampton, skipper Peter Beardsley was missing with a knee injury. Matt Letizia set up the game's only goal for Jim McGilton, and United's 100% start was over. Letizia with a little touch, and the ball into McGilton, and that's 1-0 to Southampton. Jim McGilton finishes it off. Within days, youth team coach Chris McMenemy had been elevated to work with Keegan and Terry McDermott. He replaced Derek Fazakali, who'd returned to his hometown club of Blackburn. Peter Beardsley was back in business for the match against Manchester City at least a week earlier than expected. Alan Ballside arrived with just one point from six matches. There is Gillespie looking for the one-two. A foul there from Edgehill, yes, penalty. Beardsley from the penalty spot. As safe as houses, you could put your mortgage on Peter Beardsley with a spot kick. Gillespie, Barton on an overlap. Barton full of good running and a good cross. And Lee and Ferdinand was on the line. And that's another one. Robert Lee turns away in celebration. But he might have an argument over who scored the goal. The nudge there on Ginola, lovely skill in his stride. Gillespie supporting. And Ginola again. Ginola with a cross. Ferdinand! Brilliant! Oh, the old one-two again. Ginola this time on the right. First time. And there was Ferdinand. What a goal. Rosler. Summerby, the substitute out wide, not a bad cross, and there's Craney, and Jerry Craney on his debut pulls a consolation back for City. United's Wembley trail began in the West Country. Robbie Elliott, Scott Sellers and Rule Fox were in the side at Bristol City in the Coca-Cola Cup. Keegan's first major changes of the season. Keegan demands high standards and has the players now to ensure it overcomes the corner towards peacock that's a goal there what a great moment too for the bristolian darren peacock 
An angled header, good jump, good direction. Now Ginola. Ginola whipped in that cross looking for Ferdinand. Cover was there. Fighting by Sellers. It's a goal. Scott Sellers celebrates his return to first team duty after 11 months. Ginola gets one of the right foot. Kites down. Ferdinand picks up the pieces. And that combination comes off again. And if they're looking for targets, well, Bristol City's record defeat in this competition was in 1991 when Sunderland came here and beat them 6-1. So it's six to beat. They want to go into the record books with no disrespect at all to Bristol City, but they're off and away again with Fox. And now Gillespie, and that's four. Gillespie firing Newcastle into a cracking start to the second half. Gillespie's first of the season. Lee, Ginola, back for Lee. Ferdinand and Watson and Lee. That's a magnificent goal for Robert Lee. 5 0 the final score and a ruthless performance by United. The icing on the cake was the brilliant move that led to Lee's third goal of the season. Rob Lee himself led the side out for the next match in the Premiership against Chelsea. Beardsley was still troubled by his knee injury. The guest of honour that day was England Rugby Union World Cup star Rob Andrew. And just like Kevin Keegan at football, his job as director of rugby at the Newcastle United Sporting Club was to provide Tyneside with a team good enough to compete with the best in Britain and Europe. United, and one man in particular, were too good for Chelsea. Gillespie. Fox has gone to the near post area. United arrived at Goodison Park knowing they'd lost there in the league and the FA Cup the previous season. But that was without Keegan's smartest signing. Les Ferdinand is a dedicated follower of fashion. A number nine who's always dressed to the nines. The striker with an eye for goal caught the admiring glances of the menswear trade and was voted Britain's best dressed man of 1995. On the pitch, Everton had no answer to the snappy dresser's classic style. Here comes Ferdinand. Here's Ginola. David Ginola. Penalty. And the Newcastle captain, Robert Lee, in the absence of Peter Beardsley, is the man with the responsibility for the penalty. And it's 2 0 to Newcastle United. Gillespie. Here's Barton. Introduction for Paul Kitson. A minute on the field, and Paul Kitson gets his first goal of the season. Everton did manage a late consolation goal, and as Limpar looked offside before scoring at the second attempt, but it couldn't spoil a great away win. By now, Rule Fox had played his last game for Newcastle United. Unhappy at not being a first team regular, he left for London. Tottenham Hotspur paid £4.2 million for the winger. The stage was left to United's four summer signings. Messrs Ginola, Hislop, Ferdinand and Barton put on another great performance. St James's Park had seen nothing like this before. The club's sports and leisure wear on show in Tyneside's fashion event of the year. Philippe Albert, the Belgian international, made a welcome return against Bristol City in the Coca-Cola Cup. He'd been out of the first team for nine months with a serious knee injury. 
and with Newcastle enjoying a 5-0 first leg lead, it was an ideal test for Albert's fitness. And he has the beating of Warren Barton on the outside. They're looking cross two and Bristol City have scored. And the man who scored it is number 11, Paul Agostino. Gillespie. Goes outside Edwards. Barton! Lovely goal by Warren Barton. And Newcastle United are level three minutes into the second half. Bristol City have surrendered midfield for the moment as they pack their defence and try to keep out Gillespie wonderful cross lovely goal Philippe Albert is back with a goal for Newcastle United and you won't find a more popular goal scorer that's wonderfully done Gillespie and Barton's arriving Ferdinand had to score before too long. It was an unusual cross by Warren Barton from the left edge of the penalty area, which created the goal for Ferdinand. I think that was a complete mishit by Warren Barton, unless Ferdinand didn't mind. Ferdinand was leading scorer by far. He returned to his former club, Queen's Park Rangers, with 11 goals in his first 10 games for United. But it was the new number nine at Loftus Road who was first on the score sheet. It's another excellent cross, and Dicchio! Tremendous header, and that's 1 0 to Rangers. Ginola. He tried to mark him, this time with the right foot. Another great cross, and it's Gillespie! Keith Gillespie! Great header, but what service again from David Ginola! Knocks them in from anywhere. It was perfect, and Gillespie said, thanks so much. 1-1. Newcastle struggling to get it away. Rash forward there by Barton, and Ferdinand's off on the chase. Ferdinand, look at the power, and look at the finish! And it's Les Ferdinand, the goal he wanted against his old club. And Danny Maddox, well, what can you do about it when he's flying like that? It's like watching Linford Christie going for it. Chance for Maddox, and once Ferdinand got that one in his sights, the end result so predictable. He really wanted it. The keeper, not a prayer. Now it's Sinclair causing his own sort of problems out on the right. There is Ferd, couldn't get the tackle in, and Dicchio's there again. And it's 2 2. Daniel Dicchio. Barton. The line. He should knock this one back. Oh, that's a terrible mess. And no problems there for Gillespie. That's 3-2 on a plate. The biggest gift he'll ever have this season. Carl Reddy, what was he thinking of? Warren Barton, like Les Ferdinand the week before, found himself up against his former club when Wimbledon came to St. James's Park. The England defender had settled quickly and easily on Tyneside after his £4 million transfer during the summer. Away from football, he and his wife Candy like to spend time on their favourite hobby of horse riding. And against the crazy gang, United proved just who were the real thoroughbreds. Gillespie, the man out widest. Now Bart looking to make an overlap. Gillespie's crossing. Excellent cross. And it was how he got up there. And Wimbledon now really are being stretched. Ferdinand, it's there. This time, seventh heaven. Seven games in a row. That man there's Ferdinand on the mark again. Gillespie again. Looking for Ferdinand. He'll challenge the ball seemed to take ages to make it into the net. Ferdinand, 
chase this one further out around the keeper. Now, what will the referee do here? Heald, remember, had been booked early on for time wasting. And when he came out and made that challenge, that was a yellow card offence, the referee indicated. And out he went. So Wimbledon, who are having the proverbial nightmare afternoon, now have Vinnie Jones in goal. And Ginola's looking for it again. And Ginola, and another terrific save by Jones. And again, Jones saves. That's unbelievable. Vinnie Jones. Even Jones will get applause for that. The man they love to hate gets a standing ovation and acknowledges it. Be. Lee Clark now. Clark. What a fantastic goal from Lee Clark. And not even Vinnie Jones can do anything about that one. Oh, he really let drive in. And Lee Clark, his first of the season, is an absolute gem. And that's one back now for Wimbledon. On a plate there for Marcus Gale. Gillespie, Beardsley wants it square, Ferdinand wanted it, Lee got it, Ferdinand, goal, hat-trick, Jones got a hand to it, but there's no denying this, Ferdinand today. Albert loves to move forward whenever he gets the chance, Albert making a great run, Albert, United's Wembley quest took them to Stoke City's Victoria ground in the third round of the Coca-Cola Cup. Les Ferdinand needed just one goal to equal a record set 100 years before, that scoring in eight consecutive matches. Frenchman Ginola was at the centre of controversy though in the first half. Twice he went down after being tackled by Stoke's Ian Clarkson, and the defender was sent off after being booked for both. Stoke boss Lou Macari later accused Ginola of diving. What he couldn't argue with, though, was that Newcastle swept Stoke aside with ease. Now Barton takes over again. The cross will come in from Barton. And it's a dangerous one. And Beardsley has taken full advantage by giving Newcastle United the lead. Half an hour gone. Beardsley at the other end. And still Beardsley. Chance for number two. Would you believe it? made a mistake that could have cost Newcastle a goal at one end, they sweep forward and Beardsley makes it 2-0 at the other end. Good ball, Beardsley. Oh, brilliant skill from Beardsley. Gillespie, danger here. Good save and turned in by Ferdinand. And that is the record for Les Ferdinand. It's the eighth consecutive match in which he has scored and that means he has set a new Newcastle United scoring record. Watson, good return ball. Watson sliding it forward to Ferdinand. Watson with a chance here. And still, and still, and in the end, it's whacked into the net. No problem. Peacock the scorer. Keegan can smile. Terry McDermott, his sidekick, knows it's all over. And frankly, it has been since early in the first half. Ferdinand's tap-in earned him a place in Newcastle United history. He'd scored 12 times in eight consecutive matches. And he's the first to feature in the Keegan file. Les gave us something totally different um, than what we had before. So it was really exciting to, to think about working with him, to, to think about how he would slot in with the rest of the players we'd got. You know, we knew he would fit in, but what we didn't know is, is how other players maybe would also bounce off him. Peter Beardsley, having played with Andy Cole, what, what would he do and what would Les Ferdinand do for Peter Beardsley? And then, you know, it goes on. We, we knew we'd got the, the wingers, we knew we, we were getting we were committed to playing with two wide men and we knew we had the big B and I'm sure if you ask him he'll say the same thing. 
Next stop, the impressive White Hart Lane in North London. Two of the Premiership's high-profile chairman, Alan Sugar and Sir John Hall, exchanged a few words pre-match. And by the end of the afternoon, David Ginola could be excused for allowing himself a smile. But in a hard-fought match, Les Ferdinand would fail by a whisker to snatch the all-time Newcastle scoring record. Worsley, the shorter man, got the better of Gazelle. Austin forward again. Armstrong's in! November's fixtures posed Keegan's side a potentially difficult month. First up was a reunion with his former Anfield colleague Roy Evans, whose Liverpool side had conceded only eight goals in the Premiership all season. Newcastle got off to a flyer and the match winner popped up right at the end. Right still there to be beaten. Ferdinand, so much strength on the ball as well. Beresford flings it in there, now Gillespie tries the shot and Ferdinand and it's a goal! 1-0, two minutes gone, Newcastle ahead, who else but Les Ferdinand? Not the cleanest of strikes, Gillespie fired it in there first time and Ferdinand, well I think it went in off his knee. And again, first time passing, typical of Liverpool, Barnes out wide, this is Hartness coming forward now, dangerous cross flung in there, McManaman and Rush and 1-1! Ian Rush, so typical. Liverpool still pressing forward now. It's an awkward deflection and Hislop, brilliant save. And Rush and Beresford to the rescue. And Hislop's got it this time. Pretty height on that one. Away by Mark Wright. Robert Lee. Lee opening up room and space in the shot. And Watson, and it's 2-1. Steve Watson in the last minute. Robert Lee carving his way through, too hot to handle, it came off his foot and Watson was there, he never gives up. Steve Watson's winner had made it seven wins out of seven at home. And it also put them eight points clear of Liverpool and five ahead of the ever dangerous Manchester United. On the rugby field as well, Newcastle were aiming for the top, with England international Tony Underwood and the Scottish duo Doddy Weir and Gary Armstrong, the latest recruits to Rob Andrews' ambitious rebuilding plans. And with the round ball too, international rivalry was ahead. The visit of Blackburn brought the inevitable comparison between Les Ferdinand, the Premiership's leading goalscorer, and Alan Shearer, the man in current possession of the England shirt. Twelve minutes gone, still no goals at St James's Park. Still no signs of a goal yet. Maybe now, for Lesby, good balance. Has he got the footwork? Beardsley has. Barton, Beardsley. Here's a chance, could it be the first goal of the net? It is! Beautiful finish, well worked goal, the stuff of champions. You could say that was a lovely goal from Robert Lee. Another new face in the Newcastle camp, but not a household name this time. Forward Darren Huckabee arrived from Lincoln City for half a million pounds, the going rate for future potential. Aston Villa manager Brian Little had been a Newcastle fan as a boy, but now he was shaping a massively improved team who posed a confident threat to United's good form. Draper trying to find some room to get across in, well worked. It's another good ball. Johnson, 1-0, Tommy Johnson. It's the boy from Gateshead, gives Villa the lead. This lot then trying to pick a few yards extra. It's a big, long ball up the middle. Ferdinand in his box. Here goes Big Les, and just too much power for Villa, it's 1-1. Really turning on the gas there, Ekiok just couldn't hold him. 
but he gets into his stride. Well, that's another goal for Les Ferdinand. Last season, Leeds United were the only side to win at St James's Park. Now they arrive just as determined to smash Newcastle's 100% home record. And they really pushed Kevin Keegan's team all the way. Callister looking for that one to be played to him. He's tapping it out wide to Dorigo again. And Dean, and 1-0! Brian Dean, that's a fine header just after half an hour gone. It's 1-0 to Leeds. Nice little flick, and Lee's onto it. Lee. Rob Lee, 1 1. Delicate touch from Beardsley. Lee was onto it. There was so much more work to be done. Dorigo on his backside, and Lee, brilliant. 1 1. Newcastle straight away on the attack again, and Ferdinand's up there. And Lukic, and Beardsley, and 2 1. Two in a minute. Beardsley came. Keegan off the bench, Ferdinand in the air. There was Beardsley to punish them. That's no tapping, I can tell you. Any time Kevin Keegan returns to Anfield, it's a special occasion. But a fourth round Coca-Cola Cup tie at Liverpool guaranteed a red hot welcome back. The manager's old club had outplayed Newcastle earlier in the month on Tyneside, but still ended a beaten side. United needed a better performance, but the same hero. A bit sturdy at the back of Newcastle. Watson, there's nobody up with him. Turn the Liverpool defenders back, he's got to go it alone. Maybe he can. Clever chip! Oh! Fantastic goal! What a story here at Anfield! Steve Watson, on for the edge of Les Ferdinand, has scored a superb goal. A nice touch by the manager at Wimbledon, Warren Barton made captain for the day on his first return to his old club. The Dons had given Newcastle some dodgy moments in the past, but this one was a crazy gang classic. Possibly with that mistake by Harford B. Beresford gets it back from Beardsley. Ferdinand flying in. Tremendous goal from Newcastle United and Les Ferdinand to round off a sweeping move. And Mick Harford will hang his head. He lost the ball. Goodman. Holdsworth! Well, Wimbledon have picked a team to score and they have scored. Dean Holdsworth, 1-1. Harford is there. It's a goal for Wimbledon. They're in front. This is Junola. It's in truly entertainment at Selhurst Park. And Ferdinand, another goal. His second, Newcastle second. We haven't yet had half an hour, and it's 2-2 at Selhurst Park. Here is Les Ferdinand. Pass Perry. Beardsley wants it cut back, it goes instead for Gillespie, it goes in. Wimbledon 2, Newcastle United 3. And the supply line this time was through Ferdinand. Kimball. He's got it into the danger area again, Harper's attacking it. Holdsworth! 3-3! Less than 48 hours later, Peter Beardsley faced a very different London fixture, away at the Palace. Buckingham, that is, to receive his MBE from the Queen. A proud day for the Newcastle captain and his family, but no more than Peter the Great deserved for his services to football. Meanwhile, a vote of thanks was also due to Scott Sellers, who was on his way to Bolton. The talented midfielder had been a key figure in Newcastle's First Division Championship campaign, but a serious knee injury eventually cost him his first team future. Keeper Shaka Hislop was the latest Newcastle man to suffer a London nightmare. Out of the game at Chelsea after 10 minutes with a thigh injury. So on came the popular Pavel Cernicek for his first Premiership appearance of the season. But Pav's luck wasn't much better. Little chance with the only goal of the game scored by Dan Petrescu. That was United's second defeat of the season.
They like winners at St. James's Park, so before the Everton match, world champion triple jumper Jonathan Edwards received a special presentation from chairman Sir John Hall. A major leap too for Pavel Cernacek, back into the limelight with Shaka Hislop still sidelined. Enter the local hero. Ferdinand's made the run, he might have to take this one in his stride, it does do superbly taken again by Lars Ferdinand, and it's 21 today. Ferdinand reading the thoughts to perfection, and the finish left Southall stranded. Kanchelskis has got pace. Kanchelskis held there by Beresford, was he? And that will be a booking. Kanchelskis was streaking through the middle there. And Beresford more than worried. It's red. Off goes Beresford. That was a goal-scoring opportunity then, according to Mr Durkin. At last, a Premiership start for Philippe Albert. John Beresford's red card against Everton opened the way for the Belgian international to return after waiting patiently through injury and extended reserve team duty. United were looking to make it 10 out of 10 at home against Frank Clark's Nottingham Forest. A typical turn there, leaving Des Little and Stone and Lee. Oh, what a goal from Rob Lee! Absolute rocket! 11 minutes gone, 1-0. Jutelah's skill set it up as usual. Lay off for Woe, who's kept on running and keeps on going and scores 1 1. That's an excellent goal from Ian Woe. Here come Newcastle again. There's absolutely no let up in this one. Here's Jutelah. Jutelah. 2 1. Another superb strike from Newcastle. The goals are just getting better. Ginola. It's another great ball in. Not quite clear. Lee. Ferdinand. Lee in his stride. It's another brilliant goal from Rob Lee. This is a stunning display. Rob Lee at the heart of it. Took it in his stride and put it away with no problem. Top quality. You wouldn't think of leaving Robley out your side. Um, he's, he, he's just, uh, he can play, he's adaptable, he can play in three or four positions. Um, he's matured a lot, Rob, you know. Um, his first half of the season, again, when we talk about whatever David Ginola was and whatever Les Ferdinand was, uh, I think for me, Rob was, was the best player for us in the first four months, the most influential player. He was scoring goals, he was making goals, he was working back. His fitness this year was much, much better than last year. Yeah, David had a great start, you know, and, and phew, exceeded everyone's expectations. Uh, I think he'll be the first to admit, along with possibly some other players, that from Christmas on, um, he found it tougher. But you can't take away what it liked before Christmas. It was just sensational. There just was not a better player in this country. I think also he, he, he's got to... Uh, realise in England that you know you've got to work back a little bit more. That that is certainly one of the downsides of David Ginola. But as a manager, I look at the pluses and I think, you know, they far outweigh the downsides. So we keep trying to find. We talk about him probably more than any other player at the club. You feel there's a European Player of the Year there if he gets it right, and yet he could be just another enigma. And someone will say, oh yeah, he was good, but. You know, he didn't really achieve a lot in England. The Wednesday after Christmas and Old Trafford presented the Premiership leaders with the biggest test yet of their title-winning potential. Manchester United needed the victory to hang on to their runaway Tyneside rivals. Not for the first or last time, Alex Ferguson's team proved to have the upper hand against Kevin Keegan's. from Manchester United tonight in front of their own fans again it's Giggs to Cole well Newcastle know all about him Giggs and Butts get in each other's way 
And it's Howie, and it's Ferdinand, and there's no flag. But he couldn't emulate Andy Cole at the other end. Phil Neville. Keane wants it again, and Keane has got it. Roy Keane for Manchester United. That's absolutely wonderful. A new year and a new dimension to Sir John's sporting club dream. Before the Arsenal game, the Lister Storm GTI sports car makes its first public appearance. Motorsport joining rugby and ice hockey in the Newcastle stable. A chance for Paul Kitson's season to get into gear, a first start in place of the injured Keith Gillespie, and it turned into a flyer. Ginola and Kitson getting a first touch. And setting up Ginola, got the shot in and pitched away and it's a goal. Oh. Seaman couldn't keep it out, and Ginola, a spectacular start. Ginola set up by Kitson's first touch, and he really let fly, and Seaman in the end could only push it in. It's over the top for Ferdinand now, Ferdinand shaping for the drive, and again Seaman can't keep it out, it's 2-0 now. His goal, wonderful ball forward, and Ferdinand is so strong from there. Seaman again gets a hand to it, but he can't keep them at bay. And again, Newcastle have started the second half the same authority they started the first. And now Kitson, Ferdinand, Beardsley having to scamper for that one. Oh, it's forward to Kitson. Oh, against the post, and Kitson follows up. And this time, Seaman does hang on. Next, it was the first leg of a London Cup double to Stamford Bridge for Chelsea in the third round of the FA Cup. Yet another away draw. To earn a cup match at St James's, Newcastle couldn't have left it any later. It's Terry Phelan with some room and some space out there, wide on the left. Players in the middle and Hughes, and that's 1-0. Ten minutes to half-time, it's Mark Hughes for Chelsea. It's the old great ball square, and Albert against the post, brilliant from Albert. Here's he again, it's only half away and straight back in and Howie with a flick and Ferdinand appealing for offside, no goal, disallowed for offside, the flag was up. These fans know time is really ticking out now, Albert's knocked it back in for Ferdinand, Ferdinand with a chance and he scored, 1-1. The 93rd minute and Newcastle have jumped out of their FA Cup grave. It was a great ball from Albert and Ferdinand. Now that is what you call timing. Just three days later and on to Highbury with the Gunners blocking Newcastle's path to their first League Cup semi-final for 20 years. But it was to be a night for controversy, not history. said no, Ginola stays down, oh, and that was a foul, and it's a yellow card for Winterburn, and I don't think he can have any arguments at all about that one, and I'm not at all sure that uh, Dixon's didn't merit one on Ginola, but uh, Winterburn certainly gets it. Ginola, that's a free kick this time, and it's going to be a yellow card, for Winterburn, and Winterburn, if it's Winterburn, no, Jimena's got a yellow card, Jimena's got a yellow card, I think Jimena's got a yellow card for training, that's a real buzz about this cup tie though, here's Wright from Denson's cross, oh it's a goal! some contact but uh, I don't oh. think that showed clearly just how much contact there was man. Red card 
Dixon is still down. Ginola. No, it's Ginola. Tony Adams comes away with it. And now Berko and Helder on the left. Wright's up there with him. That's for Ian Wright. It's a fantastic goal. Lee Clark came back into the starting lineup as Newcastle returned to league action at Coventry, desperate for their first away win in the Premiership for three months. Misalaka, that's weak, and it's Clark. It's Steve Watson. Steve Watson striding through the score, but a terrible mistake for Coventry. Ginnell has tried this ball four to five times and hasn't connected, but that's real sloppy play from John Salaka. Back to the cup and the replay against Chelsea. This was United's fifth game in 16 days. And that punishing schedule gave Robert Lee no time to shake off an Achilles injury. The first game had been dramatic enough. For both managers, the return was quite astounding. Ginola. Ferdinand. Kept his balance there. Fine shot. Oh, he's hit the post. What a brilliant effort from Ferdinand. Oh, Sam Belgian over the ball here. Albert, deflection, 1-0 to Newcastle, four minutes to go to half-time, and Albert strikes. Spencer, he cuts with him, Spencer's down, oh that could be costly, it's a penalty, Peacock has already been booked, Spencer was through there, that ball bobbled up, Peacock though in real trouble. The yellow card's out, and the red one. Peacock's out of this game. Newcastle, ten men now, half an hour to go. Wise has got the penalty, and perfectly pushed away then. 1-1. One, one. Newcastle still coming forward. Ginella comes in at the far post. Kitson, down he goes. It's another penalty. Peter Beardsley, always the man for the job, and again, the ten men are ahead, 2-1. Whistling all around the ground, and Hullet, oh it's 2-2, the very last minute, Rude Hullet, the equaliser. So it's Peter Beardsley then to lead by example. The first penalty he's put one away already. Normally so reliable. Beardsley against Hitchcock. Against the woodwork and Beardsley never misses. He can't believe it. Now David Lee. He might well have gone of course on a different day after conceding that penalty earlier. But it's this penalty now that counts. And he makes it 1-0 to Chelsea. Young Steve Watson then with the responsibility. Watson and Hitchcock saves it. No great power and Hitchcock celebrates. Two they've missed Newcastle. This is Dennis Wise, his second of the night. And coolly taken right in the top corner. Two now for Chelsea, none for Newcastle. John Beresford. Newcastle desperately needing someone to put a penalty away. Beresford, cleanly struck then, and Newcastle at least have got some reward. Well, Gavin Peacock, so long a hero here at St James's Park, looking to put Chelsea's third away, and he does, and he's relieved as well. 3-1, Philippe Albert to keep Newcastle alive, and they're still in this one. Albert, come on Pap, he says. But Eddie Newton can win it for Chelsea here. Servicek knows it. So too does Newton. Newton scores. It's all over for Newcastle. And Chelsea have gone through unbelievable drama. Chelsea celebrates. Newcastle and Beardsley gutted.
As the saying goes, Newcastle could now concentrate on the league and the chance to go 12 points clear of the top at the expense of Bolton. Scott Sellers was back, having moved from the league leaders to the team at the bottom of the table. Lee Clark, Rob Lee, Martin again. Beardsley, just knocking it in there Kitson. Excellent goal, Paul Kitson. Les Ferdinand will applaud that one. And Newcastle take the lead, nine and a half minutes gone. Sellers with the left foot. It's in, it's a goal. It's Bergson who's come up there and stolen it. Watson's corner then. Albert wanted it, Peacock got to it. And it's there from Beardsley. That's a hundred league goals for Newcastle from Peter Beardsley in the week he celebrates his 35th birthday and it's put them back ahead against Bolton. Buried in the true Beardsley fashion. And Bolton just had to cave in eventually. Beardsley, no messing, just the way he likes to finish them. From the local hero to the overseas star and the start of an amazing transfer saga surrounding the Colombian Faustino Asprio. The South American who played for Parma in Italy arrived on Tyneside in a blizzard and soon departed, leaving behind a storm of controversy, rumor and speculation. But the games kept on coming. Keegan's former teammate Chris Waddle had also been a possible target, but there'd been no encouragement from Wednesday. Keith Gillespie was back with Darren Peacock and David Ginola both suspended as United searched for their 13th Premiership home win. It's he right up there then. Out there, Ferdinand! He's the man for the job again. Les Ferdinand, after 54 minutes to break through. So accurate and so casual as well. Waiting for the referee's whistle, but Parts moved into a good position here. And that's 2 0. Lee Clark wraps up the points then. Good finish, too. Well, his nickname's Jigsaw because he's supposed to go to pieces in the box. He certainly didn't then. Neatly passed through to him and finished off 10 out of 10. It probably wasn't until Aspria stepped off the team bus at Middlesbrough's Riverside Stadium that United fans finally believed that Keegan had got his man yet again. The will-he-won't-he transfer deal ended in a club record £7 million fee. Even though the Colombian flew in from Palmer on the morning of the Tees time derby, the manager pulled off another shock by naming Tino as a substitute. It was to be another inspired decision. wide position. Janino making a run into a little bit of space. Peacock closing him down but not enough. And it's in and it's off Beresford. It's an own goal. Wilkinson was hovering. And here comes the new man. Seven and a half million pounds worth of Colombian into the action. What a shock. Kevin Keegan then giving him 23 minutes to make an impression. Here goes Aspria taken Vickers out wide for him look at him here Vickers trying to keep pace with him but he lost him and Watson made sure 1-1 now 74 minutes Newcastle right back in this one and Beardsley's got it and Ferdinand shoots and it's gone through a calamity for Barr but Ferdinand has put Newcastle in charge, Beardsley, Ferdinand, no great power on this effort, defence trying to close him down, they possibly thought they'd done enough, but Walsh made a terrible mess of that. Aspria may have been short of match fitness, but his first appearance was so spectacular that Kevin Keegan had no hesitation in handing the Colombian his full debut at West Ham. United had lost their last four games in London, while Buoyant Hammers had won four Premiership games in a row. Newcastle were forewarned. 
early corner this for Newcastle. Three minutes gone, Beardsley into the middle, Peacock against the bar. What a great start that would have been for Newcastle. Beardsley's corner and Peacock really strained for that one. Super header an inch or so away. Bishop knocking it through. This is Danny Williamson. Williamson looking to go all the way and he scored. Seven minutes gone, West Ham take the lead. Gonna hit fairly deep and Cotty, and Cotty has scored. 2-0 now, Tony Cotty, eight minutes left. With his suspension served, David Ginola at last got his chance to play alongside Aspria at relegation-haunted Manchester City. It was Kevin Keegan's dream team, but if it hadn't been for yet another continental influence, this unbelievable game could have been a complete nightmare. Here's Ginola now. Defenders backed off him a while. Aspria, oh lovely one too, Ginola against the post. Super football, continental style. Got through the left-hand side there, City. Square now to Clough, and Quinn deflected it in, and it's a goal. Down by Quinn then, but picked up by Albert. Striding forward. And Spreer gets foot to it now, and gets it under control, and Albert's gone all the way forward. Albert! Oh, that's superb! Philippe Albert! Central defender when he finishes like that. Just look at him come in. Now Bear again, forward for Aspria. Curls with him. Curl pushing and shoving there and holding him back. And Aspria reacting. Curl's gone down, clutching his head. Aspria shrugs his shoulders. You can't get away with that though. This is King Clancy flying at Newcastle again. Great skills there by the Georgian. Beaten away by Cernicek, and Clancy again, and Quinn squeezed it in, 2-1 now. Now Beresford, holding forward, and out wide now, for Ginola. Albert, saved, but Aspria gets it, Aspria gets his goal, Albert again involved, and there goes the salute. Ike Ebel at full stretch, Aspria knew what was going on and pounced. 2-2. This is Lomas now for City. And Rose is there. And Rose scores. 3-2 now. Still United pressing for an equaliser. Albert's up there again. Albert does it once more. Philippe Albert. Two goals. He saved it for Newcastle. What a player through the legs there. Despite Albert's dazzling display, Aspria's last-minute head-to-head with Curl made sure it was the Colombian who dominated the headlines. The FA demanded to see the video evidence and decided that Tino had two misconduct charges to answer. The crowd still couldn't keep away from training, but unusually Kevin Keegan kept the media at bay. There wasn't even a formal announcement for David Batty's three and three-quarter million pound move from Blackburn, the manager's final piece in the jigsaw. When Keegan did meet the press at the end of a big week, he blamed trial by television for Aspria's charges. But the real reason for all the tension, Newcastle faced the game of the season. In the red corner, Manchester United, eight wins in a row. Wearing black and white, the challengers, Newcastle United. 13 straight knockouts at St James's Park. The whole city was at fever pitch for the game that gave Keegan's team the chance to go seven points clear with the game in hand. But Alex Ferguson and his side had been down this road before. Five minutes, but Schmeichel has denied Ferdinand. On the last occasion... 
breathless first half. Newell. But six minutes into the second half, Manchester United break and score crucially. I think Tino will be able to answer his critics on a football pitch next season when he's had a full pre-season. Just to put it on record, what I think, I think uh, to blame him for our demise, I'll see it. Um, a lot of players didn't play well from the time he came. My initial plan was just to bring him on slowly, put him sub, fetch him on. But what you saw in that 20 minutes at uh, Middlesbrough meant you thought, well, what decision to, to put him in? I, f I felt we could accommodate him. Um, I was aware of what other people were saying, but um, I felt it was, at that time, I didn't, you know, the Middlesbrough game, in some ways, was the 70 minutes there, was the way we were starting to play, I felt. You know, we were looking a, a little bit predictable and a little bit like we were, we needed some new momentum from somewhere. And uh, that was my decision. So, it's unfair really to go away and say, well, you know, the manager made the mistakes. It's, the players don't make the mistakes. Keith Gillespie, until he got his injury at Man United, was, was sensational. If you ever look back at the Man United game and see the tackle, it was, it was a bad tackle. And he got the injury, it was a bad injury. It took a lot of getting over. And it took him a while to get back fit again. And then when I put him in for the three games, it, it, you know, although I, I, I put him straight back in, that showed you what I thought of him. His performance weren't good, but the team won the first two games. And so you think, oh, third game. But, it, you know, I don't think Keith ever picked up to, to, to where he was. And, and a lot of things have happened to Keith this year. You know, he has had uh, the problems with, with, with the betting, which he's, he's over now. And he understands, and, and the club helped him tremendously there. And, and I was really proud of the way the board, you know, they could have so easily said, hey, it's not our problem. Um, no, he, he, he's one really for the future. Newcastle's one-time healthy lead at the top of the Premiership had evaporated. Eric Cantona's stoppage time point saver at Queen's Park Rangers had given Manchester United the edge on goal difference. The last match at St James's had been the disappointment of Manchester United. The fans though were ready to have a ball against West Ham. Kevin Keegan had named the same 11 who'd been frustrated two weeks earlier. And the Colombian Aspria was to take a leading role in ending United's worst run of the season. It's just one way traffic. I do feel that by playing this system, you know, West Ham have really had an initiative to Newcastle. Ball played through here, chance for Ferdinand! And Celia saved it! And Roland turns it away. It almost came through to Ferdinand, blocked again this time by Reaper. To Ginola, trying to call one! Looking very elusive tonight, Ginola. And he goes in again, and he's already going to be booked again. And the red card will follow the second yellow. Steve Potts has gone. Well come by Williamson, and Harry got there and was caught by Dowie. Dowie's challenge on Steve Howie has left him in agony. And Aspria is onside. Great chance for the second. And it is. Aspria scores his first goal at St James's Park. And boy is he happy. Howie. United prepared to go next to Arsenal. Now pole position in the Premiership was at stake as Newcastle began a really tough final series of away games. First real test this for the Newcastle defence. Arsenal with plenty of men forward. Locked up in the post by Linnigan and it's Scott Marshall. What a disastrous start for Kenny Keegan's team. Two minutes gone. Arsenal take the lead.
Barton losing out to Winterburn. Now Winterburn has got room there. And there's right over the top of Cernicek. 2-0, 17 minutes gone. United really chasing this one. After that Arsenal disaster, an even tougher test, Liverpool away, would demand a major improvement in performance. Kevin Keegan turned to Steve Watson to stiffen his defence, leaving out £4 million Warren Barton for the first time. Liverpool had to win to keep their own title dreams alive. Between them, these two teams of the very highest quality produced one of the games of the 90s. How much will the semi-final and the general sense of Liverpool euphoria have taken out of Roy Evans' men? The manager certainly is to install the right sort of belief in his players and they produce the classic start it's Robbie Fowler inside two minutes and Newcastle are behind to Liverpool's first attack this beer has been uh, back to Colombia for an international since uh, he last played for Newcastle here he is, past Ruddock Ferdinand turns and scores what skill from the Colombian. Watch this. Roddick's face is about through the legs it goes. He's dead. He can't tackle him now. But this is a great finishing from Ferdinand. Ferdinand. That's great play. And the control and the pass for Ginola. He's run beyond McAteer. 2-1 to Newcastle. David Ginola. It's great vision from Les Ferdinand. And this is no easy finish. But he keeps his cool. That's a wonderful slot for the Frenchman. What an absolute brilliant start we've had to the game. McAteer, McManaman. We'll see how Newcastle can defend here. Fowler! Brilliant Liverpool goal by a brilliant young talent. That's a terrific play from Beardsley. Newcastle respond the only way they know how with brilliant attacking play of their own Aspria Robley curled it through for him now the reason he's not offside watch John Scale number 12 coming across the two centre backs are up you see the hands go up they think they're offside but what a finish from Aspria he's still got a lot to do but outside of the right foot spins it round David James and into the net Here. That's a wicked ball, Kalima! Liverpool's quality is there again. The Liverpool defeat prompted the manager to switch his goalkeepers again. So let's check his verdict on the men between the posts. I'll be honest, I mean, I don't know which is the best between the two of them. But you get a feeling sometimes, the manager, just like you do with outfield players, it's right to, to put one back in and, and leave the other one. They've got totally different qualities, you know. I mean, uh, Pav's very agile. You, you know, you, 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 it takes a hell of a shot to beat him from 18, 20 yards. Uh, Shaka communicates more. The fascinating thing is that the strength one's got is, is almost the weakness of the other and vice versa. And that's why, you know, as I say, I, I don't think... Uh, one will get clear above the other and, and, and it's something Pav in particular finds hard to live with. Pav's very popular with the fans, very popular with the staff. He's a nice boy. Uh, he goes very, very quiet if he's not in the side. You know, he finds that hard to live with. But again, towards the end of the season, even that part of him, him he came to terms with. You know, we have a chat and say, hey, you know, when you're not in the side, try and be like, you know, a lot say Shaka should be in and a lot say have, you know, he's, he's the best, and, and it, the debate goes on. It's got to with those two, because the, there's not a lot between them. Shaka Hislop was recalled for his first game in four months when United returned to home ground against Queen's Park Rangers. Also back to start against his old club, Darren Peacock. Steve Howie, who he'd replaced late on against Liverpool, was facing the rest of the season on the sidelines. Struggling Rangers were supposed to represent one of United's less testing fixtures. Beresford moving forward here, a good position for the cross. Ginola into the middle, and Ferdinand blocked. And still Rangers can't get it away, now they have. 
Beardsley, just that little bit deeper there. Good ball through to Ferdinand, takes it around Summer and Brevin off the line. Can't get closer. Impy. Deflection there. And in for Holloway. Holloway scores for Rangers. 1 0. He's not beaten. Watson throw in there. He got the little oh. header on. Ferdinand trying to work something out. Impy's got it here. Ferdinand is a really solid challenge from Ferdinand and Beardsley and 1-1, one, one. it's the skipper, Peter Beardsley on the spot, what a great challenge that was from Ferdinand, he really does work for the ball there, and he looked up and Beardsley, the captain, did the rest. Batty, good ball forward to Beardsley, Beardsley having a go at the defenders and scoring, and Peter Beardsley reaching the parts that other strikers simply cannot. How many times have we seen him pull off this sort of goal? And a great finish as well, 2-1. Yeah. I don't even think about replacing Peter Beardsley. People did question when I met him captain, you know, and again I got letters sent from people saying he's not a captain. I think he is. He, I think he's a captain, fantastic, because he, he leads by example. And people can relate to that, you know, it's, it's the general who, who goes at the front with his troops and says, right, let's go, as opposed to the general who goes at the back and says, go on, men, go and do the business. Um, and I just admire him tremendously. I, I don't think Peter's uh, had his best season for us. I think he's had a better season maybe last year in terms of goals, in terms of some of the fantastic things he's done. But what he's done this year is, is if anything, he seems to be fitter. He seems to be... I don't know, he, he, he seems to be defying um, nature. You can't smoke what he's done for this club. He, he, and I, I would hope um, in the future that he'll stay part of this club. That's, that's, that's really what, what I would like to see. But that, I think that's a, a, way, a way off at the moment. I think um, I'd like to bring him in into our, our setup. Um, but I, I think he'll see out this contract and you never know it. You know, it might be another one on the table. United were back on a high as they faced another tough away game at Champions Blackburn on Easter Monday. Newcastle's travelling army was on the march once more, willing United to keep pace with Alex Ferguson's team, who'd won again earlier that afternoon. Beardsley goes in here and Flowers comes out to meet him. Ripley. stay down here when Newcastle thought that Shearer was offside and Newell has broken into the box it's Tim Sherwood can he line up the shot yes oh it's off the bar Newell goes in looking for the follow-up here's Gillespie Watson to Batty break for Batty and it's in what a goal and what a story as David Batty scores on his return to Ewood Park his first This is Wilcox, helping it through to Shearer, and Fenton! Fenton the Geordie! This is Ginola, lovely ball to Gillespie, and he's pulled it back in there, turned away by Flowers, as Ferdinand and Beardsley were close again, and now the break's on for Blackburn! Fenton shut out initially, but he could be through now, put through by Shearer, it's 2-1, and Fenton has done it again. Late goals conceded again. Let's get the manager's thoughts on his defensive permutations. The three centre-halves has not worked for me. Uh, now, whether it's the three personnel I've got, um, whether it's something in their minds that they feel it's a compromise and that it, it saves me having to make the decision to leave one of them out, I would have thought it should have the opposite effect on that, but it, it, it hasn't worked. And, and maybe it hasn't worked because of the other personnel. You know, maybe the fullbacks haven't quite picked the system up. Maybe the midfield don't understand it properly. You, you mustn't always think it's just the three centre halves. But that, that's one thing I was so sure I said to Terry Mack um, well, a long time ago. The system Liverpool play really should suit us, three centre halves. And it hasn't, so we keep trying it and then abandon it. 
I think Darren's the only natural defender we've got at this club. When I say natural defender, he, he just wants to defend and uh, to his credit, he, he's tried to get into the way we play as well and he, I think he's the most improved player at this club. He would be over the, over the 40 odd games that we've played this year, nearly 50, whatever. He would be my player of the season. I think consistently, week in, week out. Other players have had better spells, uh, you know, for a month, two months. But Darren, through the season, um, would be my player of the year, definitely. Steve Howie's had another frustrating end to the season, but uh, his contribution early on was excellent. Um, I, I like him because he, he can do both things. He, he, he is getting better and better at defending. He's, be he's becoming, um, even in training now, he's becoming a tough guy for the lads to get round. He's thinking in that mode of defending. But Steve can come out more. Actually, Steve's, my disappointment with Steve in games this year, and I've, and I've told him, is that he doesn't come out as much as he should. He he'll just get better as well. I mean, he's still, he's still a baby in terms of playing that position. He's still learning. But he learns quick. He's very, very bright on the football field, uh, Steve Allen. Philip's just... He's just a one-off. I mean, you've, I've never seen a player like him. And, and because you have never seen a player like him, you're always thinking, uh, how can we get more out of him? Uh, it may sound daft to talk about getting more out of him because he, he, he defends. He, he could be a better defender. Um, he, he, he could think more defensive, especially, especially away from home. But suddenly then he gets the ball and he just, he, he just glides out of that back four. And, before you know it, he seems to be onto their back foot. It's incredible how he does it. And then you think, no, I don't want him just to defend. He's, he's too good for that. Warren Barton had a great start to the season. I mean, he came in from the first game and he gave us something we, we hadn't really had at fullback before. Um, tremendous engine, but also he was defending very well. And as the season went on and, and as we did better, I don't know whether... And, and, Again, I've talked with him about it, but I still don't know whether he, he suddenly felt a big difference from Wimbledon, you know, where they're going out every week uh, expecting to try and turn over teams like Newcastle and Man United. And if they do it, it's great. And if they don't, well, you know, it's Wimbledon. They weren't expected. I think the expectancy of this club and the size of this club uh, affected him after Christmas. And, and, and when I pulled him out after the Arsenal game, that's what I told him. And, you know, I mean, I don't expect him to agree with it. But he'll come back better and stronger next year. I'm pleased for Steve Watson. I'm disappointed for Warren Barton, but uh, I'm pleased for Steve Watson because he's never given up hope. He's never stopped trying. And like all good young players, like the Lee Clark situation we talked about earlier on, he's, he's looking and saying, where can I get in? You know, I may be not going to get in there. I mean, I think he, at the end, Steve Watson will be a centre-back. That's where I think he'll be, personally. Um, because he's got everything, you know, he's strong in the air, he's, he's got good pace and uh, he's finished to the season, he came in and it, I thought him and David Batty together w carried us through a lot of games towards the end of the season in terms of, if you're looking at performances and, and getting the uh, maximum out of a player I thought we did out Steve Watson and, and David Batty. As an individual like John Beresford, uh, as you say, he's been very loyal to us, he's been here, he was my first signing of this club, my very first one. And, and he's still here. And when he came to see me and talk about the future and that, I said, the future's very plain. You've got a year left of your contract and you've got to get back in. And it's as simple as that. It's not a case of me saying you've no future here. He's got to get back in. Robbie's waited a long time for his chance too. And uh, every time he came in, he did very well. And every time John Beresford was fit, I put John Beresford back in. That was because I felt John deserved that. But now, as, as Robbie gets older and gets a little bit more experience, trains much better than he did when I first come to the club. I mean, I, I didn't think he was going anywhere then. I think if someone offered you 20 grand for him, you probably would have took it. But to his credit, he's, he's looked, he's worked hard, he's had his injury setbacks, and as I say, when he's come in, he, he really has performed well for us. He's never let us down. By the time Aston Villa came to St James's, Manchester United had slumped to a shock defeat at Southampton. Newcastle was six points off the top with two games in hand. Suddenly the race was right back on, if Keegan's men could get all three points. Taylor trying to keep Newcastle pen back with his header, lanced on by Ekog to York and now Charles. Beresford is tipping up for York! 
a let off for Newcastle it was a tight angle for Dwight York the message is sorry boss from John Beresford we've had 25 minutes and Kevin Keegan has said it's not good enough for John Beresford Robbie Elliott replaces it Beersley waiting on the right plenty of players in black and white in the middle Beersley going his own way typically blocked by Taylor Beersley again Lee great stop by Bosnich and what a save that was Junala and Spear waiting on the edge of the area as Junala spotted him he's certainly seen Batty Bosnich had to save it Batty Beardsley breaking from Lee's help it's in for you but it's all down to that man Beardsley again look at his run it's a magnificent run off the touch of Lee but it's not over yet that's as good a cross as you're ever likely to see delivered under pressure into the most dangerous area right between the sticks goalkeeper doesn't know where to come or stay he comes and Ferdinand does what he's paid to do gets in front of his marker and flats it in the net Former United skipper Barry Venison led out Southampton just three days later. United coach Chris McMenemy was aiming for the title against Father Laurie, who was desperate to keep the Saints away from relegation. Venison couldn't get to that one. Peacock will get to that though. Ferdinand, that's a good header on for Aspria. He's controlled it well. He's got Lee galloping up outside of him. Here's Robert Lee. Forced to check inside. A superb goal, Robert Lee, his first since December, nine minutes gone, Newcastle are in the lead. Great work before Lee got hold of it, but there was still plenty to do. Checks inside, looks up and places it perfectly beyond Besant. The Jilton out wide, his lops come out to challenge him, but he had to scurry back quickly. Now the Jilton can measure the cross here. Here comes Letizier, and against the upright, and Hislop was struggling then all the way through that move. Albert and Ferdinand denying the height there. Whipped in rather deeper towards Lee. And Lee brought down there, a tackle from Benami, and that's a penalty. The referee had a perfect view of it. Lee waiting for the ball to come down, and Benami's foot was really high. So Beardsley with the spot kick against the former Newcastle keeper, Dave Besant. And Besant saves! Beardsley, normally so reliable from the penalty spot, certainly got hold of it. But Besant, the penalty king of Wembley, remember, reacting well. This surprised me, just as much as the fans. I mean, I knew what I was buying. Or at least I thought I knew what I was buying, and I'm sure my image of David, my thoughts were before I signed him, was let's have his great feet, let's have his engine, let's have that dependability in front of the back four. I think that was something that I was really keen on having. But then I don't want too much aggression, I don't want him getting into trouble. I don't like players that do that sort of thing. So I thought, well, we'll get him here and we'll change him. I really got to say, I mean, I've said to him jokingly, uh, we paid three and a half million for you but uh, if I'd have seen you play like this I'd have paid five I mean he, he is that good I don't think we would have stayed as close to Man United if we hadn't signed him either I really don't it sounds a ridiculous thing to say but um, he held us together a few times even though he was he, he was new in the team it wasn't a case of saying to Lee Clark hey you're not doing the job right because he was he was doing everything we asked of him. There's a couple of things that he couldn't do in that position, which we always knew he wouldn't be able to do, and we accepted. But uh, his use of the ball, I think playing at home in particular, he, he just found a niche, a way to run it. And, and he was actually in, towards the back end of Christmas and that. Um, and before I left him out, he was, he was actually playing better than he had early season. He was doing that job 
uh, way, way above what we expected. There's got to be a way in there for him somewhere, you feel. Now, where it is, you know, he has the same problem. He can't see where it is. And if I, as manager, say, well, you know, what about this, what about that? He'll have a go at it. And uh, I think generally he doesn't want to leave this club. But he's too good a player not to be playing in the side. And that, there's one of the, you know, arts of management, if you like, is how, how you can bounce it so that he genuinely feels he's got a chance and yet can take the disappointment of not being part of it. You know, I think that's one of the keys. Uh, it's one of the most difficult jobs. Leeds United at Elland Road was the first hurdle in a daunting final run-in for the title of three games in just six days. David Ginola's suspension gave Keith Gillespie the chance to start and make his mark against a Leeds side whose season was collapsing. Through, it's a back from speed. Weatherall has gone forward again, and the header from Gray is off the post. Beardsley again with a corner. This is Gillespie. Beasley came back belatedly. Gillespie made it tight but still got the cross in. Ferdinand reaching up his lead. Lost out that time to Elliott. Elliott has combined well with Ferdinand. Asprey is his only option in the box. It's cleared only as far as Ferdinand. But it was a rare verbal blast from Kevin Keegan that was to cause more headlines than even the result. Alex Ferguson had suggested Leeds and Newcastle's next... And he's got... Just three days later, the whole country was on the edge of its seats as Newcastle took the field at the city ground against Nottingham Forest. Tension in the two Army ranks was unbearable. A win for the Black and Whites would put the two Uniteds level on points at the top of the Premiership. David Ginola was back in the team, with Faustino Aspria left on the bench. Batty, Beardsley. Now he's able to bring it down. Peter Beardsley! A magnificent finish, quite breathtaking. And that is a cameo of what Peter Beardsley is all about. He's going absolutely nowhere. Doesn't get it down. He's surrounded by players. But watch this. A death touch to Haaland's legs. And an unstoppable shot high into the corner. Oh, that's magic. Sheer magic from Beersley. Absolutely surrounded. Look at his reaction. A little toe poke that takes it past Haaland. And to finish with such accuracy at the end of that. A happy man. That's quick thinking from Beersley again. Look at the space he's got from the throw. Ferdinand has put it over. Newcastle suddenly have four up. Schindler on the ball. Great save from Crossley. Comes from Elliott. To Ferdinand against the bar. Back into play, stayed away by Pierce. Great ball, great run, great header. Deserved a better result. And there's a mistake by Batty, there haven't been many of those tonight. Wone. Now this is worrying for Newcastle. Wone goes for goal, it's a fantastic equaliser. Oh, that is an absolutely magnificent strike from Ian Wone. One mistake in the evening from David Batty, and it's proved all oh so costly. Beardsley, 
the architect of so much tonight. Oh, and it's run off stone. And it's Albert. No, knocked away by Crossley. Aspria will collect it. Just slipped for a second. And he's put it straight at the goalkeeper. I wonder if that tells us the destination of the championship. By the time the players arrived at the last day of a long, hard campaign, they knew the initiative had passed to Manchester United. It wasn't even final opponent Spurs who would decide the title, though they had to be beaten if Tyneside's dream was to become a reality. The Premiership would be decided down the road at Middlesbrough. If Ferguson's team won, the trophy was theirs. Newcastle fans had been through the mill in recent weeks. They arrived full of hope, yet realistic. The prevailing mood, it had been a great season, whatever the final outcome. Every home game had been a sellout, and all of them had been victories bar that one crucial game. But Spurs had their incentive to win, a possible European place. Here's Ginola now, going to get his cross in and succeeding, and Ferdinand back, Lee, and Batty turning and hitting it to the great save from Ian Walker. But Batty, what an impact he's had on this team since he joined. And a fine shot there again, crisply struck, excellent reactions. Anderton. Armstrong back in, and Fox first time as well. This is Dazelle with a good turn, and an even better finish, and Spurs have taken the lead. A stunner for Keegan. One not cleared, it's down for Ginola, who really lashed that one in, and Walker again had to react. Great strike from the Frenchman. Twisting and turning again, Ginola. And sliding it through to Aspria. Mamet is the defender, desperately trying to keep him at bay. And Ferdinand, and 1-1. Goal number 29 for Ferdinand, set up though by the Colombian. He's so dangerous in these positions. An experienced defender like Mamet couldn't keep him out, and Ferdinand did the rest. Great balance of the Colombian, there's that trick and shuffle and a typical Ferdinand finish. Desperately pressing for that winner now, Clark substitutes in the middle and stretching the woodwork. Clark never gave up for that one though and really had to reach for it and Walker was beaten. Still they're battling on right to the final whistle of this season. Looking for Lee. Knocked in by Watson, and Aspria, another outrageous effort there from the Colombian. Watson. Clark making another good run and getting it back into the middle of Ferdinand, and Walker denies him. Another fine save from Ian Walker. Ferdinand so brave. There goes the final whistle on Newcastle's traumatic season from 12 points clear. They've got to settle with a runners-up spot. Applause from the spectators who've seen such entertainment. But it ends in a draw and ends in the number two spot. This one, 1-1. One, one. Manchester United's win at Middlesbrough gave them the title by four points with the rest trailing way behind. And so Kevin Keegan's search for silverware carries on. His determination only increased by an astonishing season when his highly talented team came so close. Of, of all the things that happened this year, I still think getting on the bus after the Liverpool game um, and taking part in a game like that, even though we'd lost, was probably for me the highlight of the season. I thought, that is, that is a game of football that anybody anywhere in the world want to watch, whether they're English, German, French, Brazilian, they, they've got to say it was a terrific game of football. That game, although there was mistakes in it, was the greatest advert for English football that I think I have seen in my lifetime. Now, we came away with nothing, got on the bus, Terry was disappointed too, but I said to him, you know what, I wouldn't mind playing like that every week. I'll take my chance on us winning the, the odd game 4-3 instead of losing it, but that would excite me. Going like we did at Arsenal and watching us play like we did there in the league, that would, that would decimate me. I would say, well, it's, it's not what I'm about. It's not what I want my team to be about. It's not what the Newcastle fans want. I know that. Newcastle fans would have the same feeling I had from Liverpool. Yes, it probably cost us the championship because had we won the game, uh, we would have been hard to catch. But they still come away thinking, Whoa, you know, 
I've travelled down from Newcastle or wherever, some of them come from even further afield, London, exiled Geordies. That was worth coming for. So there was highlights in the season. No trophies, but uh, maybe I'll put that right next year.